Good morning and thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Sunday morning, August 22nd. Happy Sunday. I am Gianni Navarro. Let's first check in with meteorologist Matt Barentine. Matt, yesterday was wet and muggy. Hopefully we're starting off a little drier <laughs> this morning. Yeah, and it's very humid though. I mean, it's air you can wear outside, very thick stuff and you know, it's late August. That's just what we would expect. You can see temperatures generally in the, the mid 70s. You got 75 in Mobile, 76 in Lillian. Still, though, in the 80s in Orange Beach, Pensacola, and Destin. So, really, really humid down by the coastline. Pretty quiet on the radar so far. I've been watching one little storm here offshore of uh, Santa Rosa and Okaloosa counties, but that's moving away. So, it's no worries. Uh, so, we're looking good otherwise as we start the day. Futurecast shows a pretty quiet day. There's lunchtime. Doesn't show much of anything there. We get to three, four o'clock, a couple of spotty showers and storms appear and it looks pretty quiet until we get to the late evening and then we'll start seeing more showers happening here across the area. So it's going to be a fairly quiet day. Still going to go with about a 40% chance of rain just for the evening uh, shower possibilities. But during the day, the rain chance is only about 20%. So we'll be doing pretty good really here throughout the day. So that's how it looks here for today. Temperatures will get well up into the 90s. So it's going to be a hot one. One. Have more details on that coming up in a few minutes. Matt, thank you. In the news this morning, former President Donald Trump is back in Alabama holding a Save America rally in Coleman. The rally hosted by the Alabama Republican Party featuring Lieutenant Governor Will Ainsworth, Senator Tommy Tuberville, Congressman Mo Brooks and other speakers. Mr. Trump and the others harshly criticized the Biden administration, especially on the withdrawal and evacuations from Afghanistan. This will go down as one of the great military defeats of all time, and it did not have to happen that way. This is not a withdrawal. This was a total surrender. This surrender for no reason. Another common theme from the rally, next year's midterm elections. Mr. Trump and Alabama Republicans called on voters to elect leaders who would support the, quote, MAGA agenda. The effort to evacuate Americans and American allies from Afghanistan has taken on new urgency. There are reports the terror group ISIS-K is planning to carry out a terrorist attack at the airport in Kabul, the hub of the evacuation effort. Now the U.S. Embassy in Kabul issuing a warning telling Americans not to go to the airport. Officials say the warning due to a new threat from the Islamic State and other terrorist groups, but declined to give details, saying, quote, because of potential security threats outside the gates at the Kabul airport, we are advising U.S. citizens to avoid traveling to the airport and to avoid airport gates at this time unless you receive individual instructions from a U.S. government representative to do so. We're fighting against both time and space. That's the race that we're in right now. And, um, and uh, we're, we're trying to do this as quickly and as, as safely as possible. Um, I'm not going to speculate about whether windows are closing or opening. Uh, we're focused on accomplishing this mission as fast as we can. Meanwhile, lawmakers on Capitol Hill say President Biden's defense secretary said some Americans have been beaten going to the airport. It was so dangerous, in fact, that late Friday it launched a rescue mission to grab 169 Americans just 200 yards from the airport. 17,000 people have been evacuated from the airport in Kabul in the past week, including 2,500 Americans. <laughs> vehicle crash had Mobile Fire Rescue responding to the intersection of Natchez Trail Court and College, uh, Cottage Hill, I should say. Two cars and an SUV were involved. One of the sedans overturned. Paramedics taking at least one person to the hospital. No word on what caused the crash or the extent of the injuries. The Coast Guard tells us the search for a missing swimmer ended around 11 o'clock Friday night off the coast of Fort Morgan. The 911 call for help came in around 1.45 yesterday afternoon after a 19-year-old young man was seen struggling about 40 yards off the beach on the Gulf side of Fort Morgan. Multiple agencies assisted with the recovery. A man accused of taking pictures of women in the bathroom has allegedly done it again. This man, Patrick Heron, was booked into Metro on two charges of aggravated criminal surveillance. The incident occurred last month at a church in Westmobile. He was also accused of the same crime in Foley in 2019. 
Full APD learned that Heron was seen by a female shopper hiding in a stall at the Tanger Outlet Mall. During an interview with police, he admitted doing the crimes for sexual gratification. Heron has a history of similar charges dating back to 2015. The Food and Drug Administration could give full approval of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine next week, and that's according to a senior federal official fam uh, familiar with the situation. This comes as hospitals across the U.S. are filling up with COVID-19 patients. John Loring reports. Medical workers overwhelmed with the rising cases of COVID-19. I'm actually coming in for overtime today because they're really short staffed. So I'm actually just come. I just came in um, and I'm just picking up an extra couple hours to help the team out. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the hospitalization rate in the U.S. is below the highs recorded in January, but officials say that could change within the next few weeks. Some hospitals have been forced to take drastic measures with their patients. Unfortunately, we've had to look as far as uh, Oklahoma or up into Idaho to uh, be able to fly people uh, to get the kind of, you know, to get the care that they needed just because we couldn't take care of them here. Over the past week, more than 1 million new cases of COVID-19 have been reported, according to Johns Hopkins University. What is so heartbreaking is that these hospitalizations for those who are unvaccinated are preventable. The loss of life um, for those who are in their 20s and 30s is preventable. We need them to get vaccinated. I'm John Lawrence reporting. About 51% of the total U.S. population is fully vaccinated, according to CDC data. Health officials hope more people will get vaccinated once the FDA gives its full approval to the vaccine. Mobile County Public School students just wrapped up their first full week of school with masks. The mask mandate made at least a minute la was made at last minute special meeting with parents on the other side of the issue, leaving frustrated after not being able to be heard. Now tomorrow they hope to get that opportunity. You don't have proof that the masks work. You can't give it to me, but you will. The latest mask mandate by Mobile County Public School Commissioners has struck a nerve with parent Mike Wilson. He says he doesn't want to offend anyone who masks up, but he believes it should be a choice and parents should have a say. You know, if, if you feel like the mask works, then wear your mask and it protects you from me. And that's the way I see the mask mandate. I think that kids, parents, grown people, they should be able to make their own decision about their, their health and their safety. And we didn't get that opportunity to choose for our kids. At the August 6th special meeting, some of Mobile's top doctors not only gave testimony that masks work, but urged the board to mandate them. Those again say they should have at least had a say. With special board meetings are open to the public, public comments are not allowed. Again, the meeting is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Federal help is on the way to South Baldwin Regional Medical Center. The medical personnel from the Department of Health and Human Services will help address a staffing crisis caused by COVID-19. This is the first of what state health officials hope will be more federal resources because hospitals are stressed all across Alabama. State officials say the commander of this team already is in Foley and the rest of the team arrived yesterday. That team consists of a doctor, two nurse practitioners or physician assistants, seven registered nurses, one licensed practice nurse and three paramedics. Alabama Public Health Officer Dr. Scott Harris said at a briefing that these health care workers will help fill in the gaps created by the pandemic. For now, the team is only in Baldwin County for two weeks. If needed, the hospital will ask for an extension. Also on the COVID front, a local church getting involved, making the vaccine available. Church leaders at Amity Missionary Baptist teaming up with USA Health for the vaccine clinic. They were administering the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. No registration or appointment was needed. Everyone 12 and up was eligible to get the shot. We're trying to get our community to come out and share in this uh, vaccine shot that we may all be safe. We want uh, to say to you, come out and let us get vaccinated so that we all may be safe during this critical time in our history. USA Health will be back at the church in three weeks to give a second dose on Saturday, September 11th. 
Civil rights icon Jesse Jackson and his wife are both hospitalized with COVID-19, according to a statement from the Rainbow Push Coalition. Reverend Jackson, who is 79 years old, and Jacqueline Jackson, who is 77, are both being treated at Chicago's Northwestern Hospital. The statement is requesting that anyone who has been around them in the past five or six days should follow CDC guidelines for COVID exposure. Reverend Jackson has spoken in favor of the vaccine and was photographed getting vaccinated, so this uh, would appear to be a breakthrough infection. Doctors are monitoring the condition of both, but beyond that, the statement says there are no further updates at this time.